Hi everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and I'm at Sweetwater right now inside one of their amp testing rooms in their music store, which by the way, is beautiful. It's just a beautiful store that they have here on campus, on site, at Sweetwater. You think of Sweetwater as an online store only. If you're here, if you're in Fort Wayne, Indiana, you've got to come check out the store. It is a masterpiece of retail design. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, I'm in the amp room right now. Uh, sorry the lighting in here isn't fantastic for making videos. It's great for looking at amps, but I'm sure I'm probably like half blown out right now because I'm a human reflector. <laughs> and the shadows are probably really, really stark because I've got some really bright lights just coming straight down on top of me. It's like I'm filming at noontime outside. <laughs> I could have asked for studio lights, but it would have been pretty cramped and I think we're going to be fine, right? But anyways, enough about lights. What am I actually doing in this video? I'm going to do something that I've wanted to do for a long time. I'm going to compare two Fender amps of the same model name, the same model concept, but one is the tube variation, the original style design tube variation of the amp, and one is the Tone Master digital version of the amplifier. I'm talking about the Super Reverb amp here. I think the Tone Master Super Reverb just came out recently. I've been very cautious about trying to procure one of these because like, who knows? What if, what if I don't like it? What if I get one and I don't like it? And I have a feeling as you know, consumers yourselves, uh, you might have those same apprehensions. So I think videos like this are important. I'm doing this as much for me as I'm doing it for all of you. Um, this is not gonna be a first impression sort of video. I've already spent about half an hour setting up each amp and you know adjusting my audio and stuff like that because I'm in a new location. You know, I've, I've gotta check this stuff out. Uh, but I will say there are differences. There are differences between these two amps on just the one setting that I dialed in. Uh, who knows what will happen if I turn them all the way up and things like that and try to drive the tubes. Will the digital ones sound the same as if I, you know, dime the tube one? Those are big questions. Will they sound the same if I hit them with a fuzz? I have my pedal board down here. So we'll get to test all that out. I'm trying to replicate as much as what I would do at home here at Sweetwater. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to use this Fender Telecaster. I think it's a deluxe. Uh, no model name on the back of it, but it has a comfort heel. It has noiseless pickups. It's a, you know, a Nashville loadout with the center pickup here. All right, here we go. Here is, well, you tell me, you guess in the premiere chat or the comment section, which amp do you think this is first? <laughs> neck pickup that had been the bridge on to the next amp back to the bridge Neck pickup. I'm playing sloppier with this amp for some reason. It's not the amp's fault, right? It's my fault. Back to the first amp. The reverb, by the way, is coming from each individual amp. I'm not using a pedal right now. I just switched back to the second amp. So, spoilers here, the results. The first amp was the tube amp. The second amp was the Digital Tone Master. 
There are differences, but I am impressed that the differences are really more of a slight EQ character shift is what I'm perceiving, where there's more of a high, mid, and tight, low end sort of thing from the tube amp, where the low end from the Tone Master is kind of like a bigger, looser, like hi-fi stereo kind of low end sound. And the mids are shifted more to like a low mid focus. But it's it's a slight variation. It's not a drastic difference. It's really just, it could honestly just be speaker difference. It honestly could just be a difference in speakers. By the way, we carry this thing over here today, probably a walk of, gosh, 200, 300 feet or something like that. It was a long walk. It was like walking around, uh, you know, from one side of a city block to the other corner, you know, sort of thing. I, 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 I have a feeling my measurement guess is way freaking off, but it was a long walk from the offices over here to the shop. Um, you know, when the Sweetwater guys was carrying it one handed, no sweat, didn't need to change hands. I've picked this thing up a couple times and people who talk about how light they are, this is a four by 10. The Tone Master is a four by 10. I can legitimately pick it up with one finger comfortably. It's like magic how light this thing is. The tube one weighs exactly what you would expect a four by 10 tube amp to weigh. I had a PB Classic 50 four by 10 and even in my 20s, it hurt my back to move that thing around. Whatever differences there are between these two amps, if they don't matter that much to you, like the weight difference with that Tone Master, like that's a huge selling point. Like I honestly don't understand how it's so light and still made out of physical material. Like the box itself should be heavier than that amp is, not counting the speakers or the electronics. Just the empty box should be heavier than that. Like maybe they might have even engineered some sort of lighter weight Tolex to bring the weight down on this thing. Maybe the knobs are weight relief. I can't I can't believe it. Like I'll I'll come pick it up right now. One finger. No sweat. Honestly, it might weigh less than one of my Princetons. <laughs> so anyways, let's get into testing these amps some more now that <laughs> I've spoken my piece on the weight difference. I'm not even going to try to pick up the tube one. <laughs> That was the Digital Tone Master, and here is the Tube Super Reverb Band. I am detecting a difference. It's honestly hard to tell. Like, it's all so slight when you sit there and dial them in back and forth, uh, trying to match them. It's hard to tell if the difference I'm hearing is because this one is closer to my ear and that one is farther away and the angle isn't as direct to me. That was the Tone Master. Mike's going to pick it up or if it's something physical happening behind the amp, something touching a speaker or something, but I'm, I'm picking up like a, uh, like a crispy, like torn vibrating sound. It sounds like there's a piece of paper rattling behind the amp. I, like, I don't know if the mic's going to pick that up or if it is coming through the speakers itself. And that was the Tone Master. It's really interesting. and bring up the treble a little bit on the Tone Master, because as I'm sitting here playing, I'm detecting a little bit more of a twang, a little bit more of a bright clarity 
from the uh, tube super reverb. Back to the tube. in room like there there is a tube feel to the tube amp like there's kind of this presence quality to it this warmth you know these all very subjective terms that are going to disappear once you're in a band mix but there's like a physical difference where the the tone master maybe feels a little bit more boxy a little bit more distant Maybe, but like I said, I think it's all just like EQ shifting. And if you're playing loud, you're going to use it as a gigging amp. You're in a band mix. Like the weight. The weight factor of the Tone Master makes it incredibly attractive. Like you cannot argue with it. If you get to experience a side-by-side -side with these in person, you don't even need a side-by-side. -side. If you know what a 4x12 is supposed to weigh, or 4x10, I mean, is supposed to weigh, any tube amp is supposed to weigh, and you pick that up, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. Let's do a fuzz test now, because I think fuzz tells you a lot about an amp. It, it's like, it's big wall is static, and it shows you exactly what's happening with the EQ frequencies and how your signal is being filtered by the amplifier. This is, let's start with the tube. I should probably turn off the reverb on both. Maybe I'll do a full blown out reverb comparison between the two next because i mean one's got spring reverb and one's got digital reverb like that's a valid thing to try to compare but here is the fuzz i'm using the dod carcosa <laughs> The DoD Car Carcosa, they're like 120 bucks. One of the craziest, like, affordable fuzzes there is. If you like a fuzz to make it feel like, you know, a massive fire just broke out in the same room as you and it's sucking all the oxygen out of the air, DoD Carcosa. I'll have a link down below. Um, I have a feeling they won't be in production forever, and I have a feeling when they go out of production, Sometime after that, people are going to realize just how good those pedals are, and there might be a collector's market. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they made so many of them that there won't be, but I'm fully behind that pedal. All right. That was the Tube Super Reverb. Here is the Tone Master Super Reverb. Oops. Back to Tube. Back to digital. It's a voicing difference. Like, there is a difference. Is it a difference that means you're going to pick a heavy amp over a light amp? Is it a difference where you're going to just default to a tube amp over a digital amp because you're not planning on moving it? I mean, these are, these are big personal questions you have to ask yourself as someone who might be shopping for one of these right now. I can't answer it for you. I can't make that decision for you. I can't tell you which one of these is the right one to get.
I think for my own personal taste, I do prefer the tube version for use with fuzz. Uh, let's do the HM2. <laughs> <laughs> HM2 paired with a Telecaster, right? That is the Tone Master. Tube Amp. Throw a little bit of delay on there. The Tone Master now. With the setting it's on right now, I think for high gain stuff like the HM2 and the Fuzz, I think the tube version is my preferred. Like if I was going to be recording or gigging on a level where I've got roadies carrying stuff, like that's just what I'm going to I'm going to pick. But for the type of music that I play, Let's do that. Let's dial in like one of my surfy sounds. I've got the surfy bear reverb down here. I've got my 50 50. That was the tube. Here is the digital. some of the lows and some of the mids out of the Tone Master. I mean, there is a. I'm I'm really curious to hear what this sounds like recorded with this matched pair of Royer uh, ribbon mics. Like it, comparisons are tricky because there is a difference. There's always going to be a difference. I'm betting if I had two of the same amp, as far as two tube amps or two tone masters, there would be slight differences on equal settings from component variants with speakers and stuff like that. And honestly, the difference in sound might be mostly the speakers, but that is generally sounding more boxy, more like low mid filtered in a way where this is doing the classic tube kind of like clear, but breathing dynamically with some tube compression sort of thing. I'm running these at really low volume right now. They're, they're just above two on the volume knob. 
Let's do uh let's let's compare the reverbs on each one. Then I'm gonna do some high volume tests, blow out my ears on my first video of the day. I've got so many other videos to make today, and I'm just gonna blow out my ears by turning these all the way up. I'm gonna turn up the reverb uh, to where I think it sounds just past reasonable here. I'm also pulling back the lows and the mids on this amp to get a little bit more clarity. It's, they're very warm sounding amps. I haven't spent a ton of time with super reverbs, but I'm honestly impressed. Like you think of Fender amps and you think of like a twin reverb being super bright and ice picky. These are really like warm, soft sounding amps, kind of like, like they're a bigger version of a Princeton in a way where you get that big, warm, soft middle kind of character out of them. I, I'm impressed. <laughs> from the tube version. It's not incredibly drippy, but it has that classic Fender spring reverb splash to it. There's a little bit of drip right there. All right, the Tone Master now. Now the Tone Master sounds brighter and clearer. That's interesting. The reverb did like a tonal shift on the tube one. Like the, the reverb on the tube version has uh, more of a wandering mid-frequency thing going on where it's filling it out, which is you know one of the reasons to use reverb. where the tonality of the reverb on the Tone Master is, is resting in brighter frequency. I'm being incredibly nitpicky and cork sniffery right now. But like I said, this is a video that's as much for me as it is for anyone else. Like I'm documenting what I'm thinking about this in the moment because I've been thinking about these amps. I've been curious about these amps, about the differences that I might find between them. This is gonna sound like heresy, being a surf rock guy, but I think I like the digital reverb <laughs> better than the real spring reverb. Maybe because it's more predictable as far as getting that little drip. Maybe that's what's going on. The fact that it's got a little sweet little drip-like edge to it. This is dripping better though. That's got, it's got much closer to a real drip right there. But I think the tonal range of that digital is is living where I tend to dial in my surf reverb. So I think that's why I'm favoring it. I mean, practically, the voicing of the reverbs on both of these amps, I would be pulling them back more and doing more of, you know, like a bluesy sort of reverb. I just put on my DoD 250 circuit here. Ooh, I went out of tune bad somewhere along the line. I bent that B out of tune. Hitting it with my 250 and the reverbs up and playing bluesy licks on the neck pickup, I, I, I'm favoring the Tone Master. It's going back and forth. With the heavy drives, the tube. 
with clean and light drive and the reverb up, the Tone Master. What does it mean? <laughs> gets a lot darker without reverb up that kind of like wandering mid frequency that I mentioned that the reverb brings in it 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 darkens it up a lot and it just feels like the signal has like pulled back in the mix somehow you know it's more distant that's very interesting very interesting <laughs> so much more clarity and presence out of the tone master on this setting right now which is a, a setting i would use i would use this setting for my own personal purposes <laughs> definitely play that poorly for my own personal purposes too. Weirdly that sounds kind of bad to me. Right now. That's the tube amp. What the heck? But you know the Tone Master sounded kind of bad to me with the fuzz and the high gain on there. Like, you know, the, the thing with amps is that you, you are buying them for specific sounds and specific purposes. So that's really important information. Most amps aren't a one size fits all. Like you have to consider your rig. You have to consider uh, your style of playing, what kind of effects you use commonly, what kind of sounds you're trying to get, what kind of band you're trying to, you know, find your mix in or recording you're trying to find your mix in. I have a feeling this video is going to make the decision harder for a lot of people. <laughs> All right, let's do the high volume stuff. Uh, I am betting the tube is going to win the high volume competition as far as like natural drive sounds, tube drive sounds, but I've been wrong before about things like that. So I'm going to kill the reverb on each amp. I'm going to have to make adjustments to my recorder when I do this. Let's start off at six. It's really hard to tell because I'm going to have to tell in post what I think about that because at a certain volume, like your ears just, you know, they're telling you something's loud. And I typically have trouble going like, oh, that sounded super good until I hear the recording of it. You know, I can tell you that it fe they, they feel about the same. Uh, the, uh <laughs> I'm going to try hitting it with a fuzz. Yikes. <laughs> it's loud. These are loud amplifiers. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to do this too much because I don't want to disturb everyone in the rest of the shot. Um, ooh, boy. Uh, okay, I'm going to turn them up all the way. This is going to be really, really quick test. The static itself is threatening. I mean, nice is pushed into a nice drive there. All right, now the tone master. 
I'm gonna hit them with fuzz. All right. <laughs> I didn't wanna do that very long for everyone else because I try to be considerate and also for me, because I want to protect my ears. And these are very, very loud amplifiers. Um, without the fuzz running, I'm honestly really impressed with the Tone Master. I think the drive character with it all the way up is obviously more tube-like, more natural with the, uh, the Tube Super Reverb, but that did not sound bad at full volume. Like, I could definitely work with that and the fact that it was getting crispy you know it has an attenuator on it on the back and you know i'll try that in a second and we can explore those drive sounds and i, I was making fun of it the other day like when i first saw it yesterday like oh, why does it have an attenuator it's a digital solid state amp and i realized they're trying to model they're trying to replicate the real thing and so to get drive sounds you have to turn it all the way up so then you need the attenuator to bring the volume down. It's, it's smart. It's just smart. <laughs> I, I get it now that I think about it for more than 30 seconds. Um, once I played the fuzz through them both, the difference be became much more apparent here in room. I'm sure in the recording, it'll be more apparent to everyone else on the, uh, the non-fuzz uh, setting. But I... I can't say that it sounded bad. I, I can say that it sounded different. It's very interesting. Very okay. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put the attenuator on for like the like the one watt setting or something like that, and I'm just gonna dime the volume, and I'll play out with that. All right, that is the one watt setting with the volume all the way up. It's loud. It's not quiet. It's louder than I had it all the way open on the number two setting on the on on two on the volume, but it's comfortable. Like I I could be in the room with that, you know, for an hour or two. You could play with, you know, a mid to light handed drummer at that volume level. Let's hit it with a little bit of drive from a 250. Sounds like it's falling apart a little bit. Here is the fuzz because of course. I'm gonna try it with the volume rolled back just a bit. It's, it's down to seven now. That sounds more reasonable to me. It's a drive sound instead of like sounding like it's falling apart. Here it is with the 250. Having trouble with the B string going out of tune with this guitar. Now 
now with the fuzz. It seems to be handling it well. I'm impressed. I'm impressed across uh, everything I've done so far. Uh, like I've said a bunch of times, it is different. It's not exactly the same, but functionally, it's a loud amplifier. <laughs> it is really loud. It's very, very light. I think it sounds good. Like I'm impressed. It's like I'm getting a good in-room experience with it. But you have to make a decision as a consumer, as the same as I do. I'm a consumer as well, even though this is my job now. Somehow it's become my job to mess around with guitar gear. Um, I would, I honestly, right now, I'd have a really tough decision. If I was gigging, if I was gigging, Tone Master, yeah, local gigs, loading an amp in and out of my car, I need to be loud enough to compete with a drummer, you know, because I'm playing bar gigs and stuff like that. I'm getting paid, you know, two drink tickets and maybe $5 after we split, you know, $50 <laughs> amongst the band and, you know, costs of, you know, making merch and stuff like that. You know how it is being in a band. You make no money. But if I was buying to record, if I was buying to tour officially with roadies and stuff like that, the tube, the tube amp for sure. I think those are $500 more than those, if I remember correctly. Um, so that decision would be a, a, you know, a no-brainer in a professional context, a recording context, a studio context, a professional touring context, uh, the tube amp would do it. I mean, if I was going to do digital modeling as a professional touring act, then I'd probably <laughs> be going with a Kemper or something like that, right? But as... You know, a weekend warrior, dive bar gigger sort of mentality. That's a smart amp. That's a really smart amp. What do you guys think? I, I really want to know your opinions down in the comments section. Uh, huge thanks to Sweetwater for making this possible. They pulled uh, the Tone Master out of the warehouse for me. If you come here, if you come to the store... They have these giant touch screens. If they don't have something in the store, you can look for it on their website, on the giant touch screens, and they will bring it over here for you. The warehouse is, is just behind the building here. It's connected. You can get anything that they have in stock. You can see everything they have in stock in the store and have it brought over for you to try. No one's going to be mad at you if you don't buy it, but you want to try it, you know? <laughs> It's a really cool experience here. Um, I've been having a great time. I'm sure anyone else who would come here would have a great time as well. Sweetwater takes care of people. Like, if, the, if Sweetwater has any reputation for anything at all, it's the fact that they take care of their customers and they take care of their employees and they take care of their vendors and people like me, media people like me. They're taking care of me. I really appreciate it. So anyways, click the links down below. If you're shopping for anything, they are affiliate links, and so if you buy anything, then you know it does help put food on the roof and diapers on the table for my family. But anyways, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude, nasty comments, support us on Patreon. You know everything else. Some people like to hang out in the premiere chat. If you're some people, the best thing you can do is click the bell to get all notifications so that you know when videos are launching and you can be part of the chat. But other than that, stay grounded. Bye, everybody.